Good morning to you, Karibu, back to Y254 TV. Thank you for still sticking with us. We are very glad and we are on to our first conversation. Today being Wednesday, we do Empowerment Cafe where we give you inspiring stories, heart-touching stories of people that have been through it all and they still manage to come out victoriously. And this week, I am featuring Aizo, the blind barber. And I would want him, that's, uh, that, that's the slogan I was given that he uses, I would want him to be able to introduce himself, Alafututa, get into the conversation right in. So let's welcome Isaiah. Thank you very much, Grace. Uh, my name is Isaiah Ochin Oino, mm -hmm. a resident of uh, Siaya County, that is uh, Game Sub County, Wagai. Mm -hmm. yeah, currently... Uh, uh, I'm in Nairobi, mm -hmm. and uh, this is where I hustle. Ah. Yeah, that is all. Probably the same thing. So who, who is Aizo? Aizo is a blind baba in brief. Mm -hmm. mm, it's a, such a paradox, but then uh -huh. that is the reality. That is the thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, living in Nairobi mm -hmm. uh, with uh, a father, mm -hmm. and uh, actually hardworking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the recent past, very hard working to, to, to put things in place. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ah, amazing. So yeah. where, where, do, where, where did you start from? Uh, I'm not sure um, how, where, where to start from this uh, in terms of this conversation, but I will just want to, you to paint a picture of uh, did you, were you born abled differently or is it something that happened to you? Uh, what exactly happened? If you're okay to talk about it. Ah, it's okay, it's okay. Actually, that's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. Because somebody somewhere uh, might feel very positive. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is why I'm here. Mm -hmm. So I'm uh, aged uh, 37, approaching 38. Mm -hmm. uh, I've lived my life, probably half of my life, I'm not saying. Uh, but, but then I lost my sight two years ago. So it's not a long time ago. I might look like I've stayed in this condition for long. Mm -hmm. But then it's just that uh, I was not alone. I, want to, I don't want to brag, but I've managed to come back mm -hmm. and get on my feet. And I look like I was born like this. So I lost my sight in two years ago mm -hmm. while I was 35, 36, the approaching mm -hmm. 36. Mm -hmm. Two months to 36 years. Um, so I was uh, doing lots of businesses, mm -hmm. working with um, Indian companies sometimes, sometimes own self businesses, sometimes uh, in school, mm -hmm. teaching, you see all these kind of contracts. Mm -hmm. So I'm also a teacher, uh, I teach mathematics oh, and business studies. Wow. But then when I lost my sight, I thought I lost it all. Mm -hmm. The first thing that sprang into my mind is that uh, um, in town, I normally see blind people begging. I mm -hmm. thought, I thought, I was crashing and I was like, will I go out to that bag? Mm -hmm. So a lot of things happened, probably they'll come out with time mm -hmm. in this show. Mm -hmm. But then uh, I'm now right here. Mm -hmm. uh, within two years, mm -hmm. I'm already back in the business and trying to get something at least to, to mm -hmm. feed myself. How did you lose your sight? Okay, um, a very good question. I also do not understand. But then, mm -hmm. uh, it started while I was in school mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and hustling as a teacher, those contracts with mm -hmm. school man uh, boards, managers, mm -hmm. management, I mean. Yeah, um, and uh, I realized I could not see, it was during campaigns, mm -hmm. yeah, just before elections, just before Kenya Kwanzaa. Wow. Yeah, during those uh, grassroots nominations. Mm -hmm. uh, I realized uh, after those votings, before the general elections, I realized I could not see the horizon. Th there, was a, there was a road show and then that vehicle was, I was like following it, patiently seated under a tree. That's when I realized I it disappeared some distance that I ought to have been seeing. Mm -hmm. Then immediately I ran to the hospital, uh, mm -hmm. to just to check nearby hospital. Then mm -hmm. I was referred to Kis Kisumu, uh, Russia. Mm -hmm. It was not easy, but then I was still seeing. I went to hospital where I had my sight. Uh, they took blood samples, tried testing them, said the results would come out after one hour, 30 minutes. It never happened. 
they I was I waited, waited, waited at the casualty in Paka Karibu Sanani na Nusu Siku. That is from Sakumi oh. midday. Wow. And I detected this problem from Sanias Bui. Wow. Sasa I was in hospital and I was taken toward Sanani Usiku. In that mm. hospital without any treatment, nothing was happening. It's I was just like I was supposed to wait for the outcomes. You mm. lab test. Mm. Spent there a day. Uh, next morning I was there. Uh, the, uh, the second day, I was uh, now being given medication. Mm. Uh, they didn't tell me what was happening. Mm. I was like, tell me what is happening. Is it my blood? Is it, is it something I took? Is it, so is you it went and came back the following day? No, I was in. You stayed I was, I was up hospitalized. To the day. I was. I was in wow. the, the ward. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. I, I was not even eating because I was not myself. Wow. And uh, then I just woke up. The second day, I woke up without sight. Mm -hmm. I woke up very late around Sunday. Mm -hmm. then now I was not seeing completely. Now that is when they became serious. This thing, like now we have to put some medication, injection, drugs. Nini. Now everybody was like, this thing was serious. What they ought to have done when you came? Yes. So. I actually lost it all and I felt like leaving, things were not. And then when you lose your sight uh, at uh, that kind of an age, you don't realize it. You will think you're still seeing because the, the faces around you, like if I was seeing you before, when I got here, I would have your picture. And then when I lose my sight, then I will feel like I'm still seeing you. If I hear your voice, your, your face comes in my mind. So it was confusing. I was not sure I lost my sight until one week elapsed. Wow. And I was being discharged. Like they were saying, oh, it looks like we can't so we can't help it. There's a damage in my, my, my I had a pressure in the eyes. Uh, I was being told my, my nerves are swollen. They are, they are not sensitive to light. They have lost sensitivity. They, they were m the, the sensitivity was mild yeah, mm. because I could feel like I could see Kidogo in a potato like that. So it was mild. Then I lost it all. I was referred to Sabatia. It's a long story. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up in Nairobi, Aga Khan, Lesa in Westlands, Lower Kabete Road, mm -hmm. West, is it West Wood, West Side Tower. That is where I was told by Dr. Vaida. That is where I was told my problem. They said, uh, looks like my nerves were, were, have had a problem uh, for a long time. Wow. And their nerves are coming. And I was like, this thing is very hard to reverse. They had to do steroids on me. It's a long story. And then they were, it was trial and error. They sent me for MRI in Aga Khan. Went, I did it. Went back for medication. A lot of steroids in me. It never worked. So, okay, currently I'm still under drugs. Not really drugs for treating, but supplements, mm. like protein, vitamins. Uh, hoping that things would get better. It's two years mm. now. Mm. But I can't sit at home crying or sleeping. I have to go back on stage because life is going on, always. Wow. Yes. What went through your mind when you realized that you lost your sight? It was like, the first thing is like, how will I get back? I, I, I was thinking of my kids. How will I, how will I support them to, to adulthood and if this thing doesn't... Okay, I was always like this thing in Aisha Kesho. Mm -hmm. Every time I sleep and I wake up in the morning, I was like, let me try. If I wake up, I was like, let me check if I'm seeing them. If I realize, the moment I realized I could not see yet, I was always depressed. I was always down. I was always breaking day and day until I was now not myself and everybody was worried. I lost a lot of weight within six months. The first six months, over 10 kgs. Wow. It was bad. And I did not know where to run to. So uh, th that is the moment I realized people with a disability or severe medical conditions do not know my th that could be saved, can never know where to get immediate and urgent help or attention. Mm. Yes. Wow. So I was all alone because uh, I have lived my life without parents. So I, oh, you've lived your life without parents? Without parents. I lost them while I was in elementary school. Mm -hmm. So it's not been easy, that kind of past. But I think I've, be, I've, I've, become, I've learned to be a very strong person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so don't become, uh, d I, I don't break down. I can feel your voice. You are, you're <laughs> trying to be <laughs> emotional. <laughs> they are okay. <laughs> okay, I'm just wondering how life can just change drastically in a day. We take some things for granted. That is why I'm here to tell everyone to prepare for anything, anytime. Because if you don't, those people that you see killing themselves, mm. Probably, uh, you could be one of them if you're not prepared properly. Mm. It is not easy. Just prepare. Just prepare mm. like, 
a phone call would come and then, hello, your mom is normal. And then you, you don't kill yourself at the same time. Mm. Prepare for anything. Mm. You, you leave this place, get in the bus, go back to the house. Mm -hmm. Suddenly there's an accident, you lose a, your limb, mm -hmm. one, of the, one of your legs. Mm -hmm. uh, will you, uh, how will you deal with that? How will you yeah. handle that? So you have to prepare for anything. Wow. Anything. How did you navigate th that period? I was not strong. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was crushing day by day. Like I told you, I expected to have my sight back every morning. Mm -hmm. The moment I realized it was not there, mm -hmm. I was shaking and I felt like crying. In fact, I shed tears a number of times. I did not know that a man could be that weak mm -hmm. until I was a victim. And uh, that was the time you, you lose, you, come, you get that kind of disconnect. Mm -hmm. Your friends are like, what has happened? When they come, oh, they feel like they can't stay with you for long, or maybe they're busy, or it's that kind of things. Mm. And uh, you, s you don't get any attention at home. People only want to, okay, those guys at home only want to come to you when it is lunchtime or supper. It is lunchtime, they wake you up, eat, then they go away. You, so you, you don't have anyone. You just sleep and uh, you see that. Mm. It is not easy. And then I, I was used to that life. I got to a, a point of I did not know what was happening to me. I like saying that statement until I recovered from it. Wow. So... It must have been depression. Mm. I, I want to thank uh, uh, a foundation in Korokosho in Nairobi. It's called Restoring Dignity Foundation. Mm. Uh, uh, the CEO is Fred Ogola, Frederick Ogola. Mm. Th that, that, those guys, uh, they didn't know, I didn't know them. They didn't know me. Suddenly they just came to the house and, and, and picked me from there. Uh, said mm. they were told somebody is here who cannot see. And then they got, I was like sleeping the whole week. I was like um, not eating, but if I ate, I didn't even feel like there was taste. So I could visit the loo once a week, imagine. Wow. And I was okay, I was eating. Wow. Once a week. So I was like sleeping, there was you, I could not tell time. I even reversed day and night, I used to sleep during the day and at night, what work ilala, I was trying to listen to nothing in the morning, in the rudy sing easy. I was not taking shower and I was like, I, I've not sweated, I'm just in bed, I'm okay. I, just kind of laziness, like I existed, like I didn't exist. Mm. It was nasty. Yeah. So they came and introduced me to that restoring dignity. Actually, that is why I'm here. I think they must have restored my dignity. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't have any, 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 any value mm. personally. I felt like I was, I, there was no need to live. Mm. But I didn't succumb. Mm -hmm. Probably I would, I, I would have, mm -hmm. but I don't want to go there because I'm not there. Yeah. I, I, I shifted from that highway to, mm. to the normal path. So I was introduced to mental classes, uh -huh. mental health classes, not mental like I was mad, mm -hmm. but mental health classes where I interacted. There's a woman in, in, um, in Korokosho, mm -hmm. uh, that is Korokosho Ward, here in Nairobi, that inspired me. Mm -hmm. She had a very nasty background. When I listened to her tell her story, I realized I don't have a problem. Mm -hmm. If that is the kind of experience you have as a woman, mm -hmm. then I need to be strong as a man. Mm -hmm. I started gaining confidence and came back to my life path. Wow. How did your family handle that season? Oh, as at now, I don't have a family because of that. Wow, so sorry. Such things. I have a very small circle of friends because you they see. They left. Why would they stay? I, I was not giving them reasons enough. Why okay. would they stay? Because every phone call from me was like, I need 100 bob, I need uh, 200 bob. And then you see, they have to become tired. The only guys I still have left are those ones I have bloody ties with, sister and brothers. Mm. But then you see, they also can't do much because they are limited. They have families. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, the problem with the disability, when you have a problem with one of the organs or your body, whatever, you tend to seek help with confidence. And these guys, uh, because of sympathy, you get help. And then the, you will never know when they, they, they are. Because they can't tell you I don't have, they avoid your call completely. Mm -hmm. Like this guy never picks my call. I no longer call. I'm not saying I call people frequently so much for help, mm. but when I was down there, these days uh, I, I get my own money. Mm. Yes. However small, I get my own money. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I will want us to watch a video. It's okay. Of you uh, at work, so that you tell us the transition between uh, that period where you stopped, you said enough is enough, mm -hmm. let me get out and do something with my life. Mm -hmm. So we talk about that, but I want us to take that video it's so okay. that we are able to, to uh, uh, continue with the conversation. Just in case you're joining us, I am uh, having a conversation that is inspiring stories. And I am having a conversation with Aizo the Blind Baba. He's called Isaiah. And he has such, such a hey, I don't know what to call it. You, you don't take don't don't take things you have for granted. That's all I can say. But let's take that video. We are coming back.
wow 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 Oh, kwa na excuse gani ya kukosa kufanya kitu na life yako if people who are able differently are able to do something anyway what are these hands your uh, conflict we're just um conversing with Izo and we are going back to that point where we watched that video he he opened a barber shop and as you've seen he's doing an amazing job let me just ask you how did you start the barber shop uh Okay, I'll still attribute my my, my current uh, status to RDF, Restoring mm -hmm. Dignity, Dignity Foundation in, mm -hmm. in Kolkosha. I think they're working in, in, in partnership with the LVCT, that's mm -hmm. an NGO, mm -hmm. in, the, in some Arise project, mm -hmm. although it's, it's done by now. I, they managed to organize uh, uh, the capitation mm -hmm. and... Uh, it, it, it was out of uh, it was from it was it was from within me mm. like there's a good question here what can a blind man do mm. like if you're told to generate business ideas for a blind man what are you going <laughs> to say <laughs> <laughs> you see blindness does not really easily compare to other okay given the fact that let's talk about uh, forms of disability without pain mm -hmm. deafness and dumbness and Blindness. Mm. You see, blindness does not easily compare to those those other ones mm. because somehow the other the other 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 counterparts have uh, alternatives mm. of, of where to engage in business. Like they can play soccer, uh, simple, mm. and other things. But somebody without sight, what kind of business can this person do? That is why I, I, if I, I started uh, engaging a barbershop kind of business, mm. then. Many people are like, how are you going to do it? How, how, how is he doing it? Like every day people come, they, they want to see how it's happening. Mm. Oh, that is all because uh, uh, everything is uh, always inborn. Like um, it is not possible that a blind man can totally do nothing. Mm. There's always an alternative. Mm -hmm. It is upon this person to investigate and find out what mm. can I do that is income generating. And then may probably get support because uh, where are these guys going to get get that kind of income to start okay. or, or capital? Mm. So briefly, uh, I managed to to get that kind of uh, uh, support, mm -hmm. and uh, that that business is is only one month old. Yeah, it's not oh. it's, it's not a, a, a it's, it has not stayed for long. Mm -hmm. uh, this could this is the second month. Mm -hmm. So, and so far, uh, I can say it's working properly. Mm -hmm. I was, when I had my sight on, mm -hmm. when I was like you, mm -hmm. when I thought I had my organs functioning uh, as if it was my own right. Uh, can you? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Are you understanding? Yeah, 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 I understand. Like you have, uh, you are really blessed. Entitlement. You, you, you are really blessed with, with everything functioning proper. And you really underrate that. Mm. I never realized that until I lost one. So I, I used to do my beard in the house, sometimes without a glass, when my that glass mirror mm -hmm. got broken, I used to do it without seeing, without a mirror. So I was like a blind person. Mm. That is where I got the idea. So I, I thought I was thinking proper and proper. And how can I how can I develop this? I can improve it. I can the way I used to do it on myself, without checking, is the same way I can do it on another person and get paid. I could even do my own head. Ah, okay. By myself. So uh, I think many people can do that. But of course, with a mirror, they can confirm where some hairs are left. But as for me, my left hand. No, right now is my, my, my eye. It will sense where there is hair and I'll cut it. So <coughs> that is where I, I got this idea. Uh, when I proposed it, I was like, those guys were like, how, how are you serious? And then you, you'll hire somebody. So I, I simplified the problem by saying, I will hire somebody. I just need a business. And then, so that is how it happened. Eh? Mm -hmm. But the moment I set it up, I was like, how can I hire somebody? This person might steal things here and, and get, disappear with them. Uh, because I don't know them and uh, probably other things. So mm -hmm. I, I could, uh, I just started doing it on my own, getting clients and doing it. That is how it started. That is simply how it started.
Wow. Yeah. How, how has the response been so far from clients? Oh, not so bad. Uh, first of all, I'll, uh, because I told you I've learned a lot of business in school, mm -hmm. I decided, I landed on that name, I saw the blind Baba. Many people have complained as friends, at, how, how do you write this? And then, guys, many people are scared of the word blind. Mm. <laughs> do I look like I'm scared? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was not born like this. Only two years and I've, I'm already comfortable with that. The same to an extent that, like, I was not very comfortable with the blind people before mm -hmm. myself. I could not mention the term blindness to them. I had a friend who was blind. I'm not going. I'm not going to go that far anyway. But come back to your question. I have clients. M most of them, people are very lazy at reading. So you see, these guys come in without reading that. Mm. So they, they, they get in there <laughs> and then say, "Mimi pia na changamuka." Like, sasa, poa, unaitaji, nini, alafa nasema, I just need uh, a box, I need a bald, I need such kind of stories. Mm -hmm. And then I pick my tools, and, and after uh, covering the, the, the client, I, I start my business. Then I do it. And then, this white can is always there. I don't know why they don't seal it. It's always at the door. You have to seal it before you come in. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I did, once I did, I, I once did uh, a haircut to a guy who never realized completely that I was blind. Wow. Akanilipa. So before I ended on the Kamambia, what do you mean? And uh, are you? So I introduced myself in the Kamambia. Make sure you come back again because whoever just shaved you is a blind man. I wow. use the word blind because visual impairment, wengine hawa levy. Sasa alishtuka lakini alisema wewe unaona kidogo. Kadiliwa kaenda. So, but the way I struggled going to that shop with this mm -hmm. because uh, from my house to the shop I navigate alone. Na unajua asubuhi na hizo mapikipiki na mama magari zikienda ziki watu wanaenda job. And nobody offers to to see me there. But so I can't complain because I'm actually going to my workplace. Um Another example is there's a guy who came in there. Uh, Ali realize at Sioni, I think he was in the interview, uh, while I was trying to get that brush, a worktop, that uh, dust, whatever. Mm, mm. And then I was like uh, trying to find it, then I got it. I always know where I put them. This time around, I don't know. Somebody must have moved it. So when I picked it, Ali Alijua. Akawagopa So when I detected Asha Jua, mm -hmm. I started the story, so I was still finishing. Uh, like, na mimi? Then, no. Why do you ask? Um, okay, now I'm sure you don't know about me. You don't know much about me. So I introduced myself at that point. Mm -hmm. By the way, I'm a blind man. What? Uh, I'm a, that is why you shika shika hapa hivo, kitafuta hiyo brush. Eh, hey, I'm a blind man. Na ujaona hiyo white can hapo? Unajua ni meyona ni kafikira muta meiwacha hapo. So they talk like that. Mm. And then we get to a, a consensus, like mm -hmm. Ananuliza, uh, and how are you doing it? Alafu Namuliza, ni mefanya vibaya? Apana, ikutu saa, but sasa, how? Nikamambia, it's all about attention. It's all about attention. So, mm -hmm. my left hand, like I said, is my eye. My right hand controls the machine. How do you feel about uh, those reactions when people say them? Because I want to be... Uh, known properly in that region because I want that to be known everywhere so that I get my own class of customers, you know, mm -hmm. the guys who will come because they want to be shaped by a blind man. Mm -hmm. And I already have customers who have come back like three times because I did shave them and I'm blind. Mm -hmm. And because they want to change, they don't want to change from one shop to another. So I actually feel very Okay, I don't have any problem with that because I'm actually a blind person. That's simple. Wh what is the most difficult thing about being in this situation? Oh, sometimes I have to wait for somebody to help me do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. That waiting bit, mm. it, it's, it doesn't impress so much. But then, like, uh, from the house to the shop, like, sometimes I, I, I'm supposed to take a place of five minutes, I'll take, like, ten or 15, depending on the, the state of the road, and uh, all that kind of stuff. 
So my, my, my things delay. In fact, I serve my clients slightly more than the other people. I, I take a slightly longer time, you understand? Mm. And uh, because they want good work, they att I attribute that kind of time to attention and good work. So it's not a bad thing unless they're in a hurry. And maybe another thing is that uh, sometimes when there's some, uh, I need help from somebody, like, uh, do come and do me this, uh, I always feel like they have not done it the way I want it. So I have problems in my mind with how people help me at the same time. But I don't want it to come out because if it comes out, I want to get help. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. if, if after, after being assisted, I try to find out how it's done and then I make corrections if there's any. And that is how I live my life. Okay. Mm -hmm. At that times you feel like um, blaming God or, or blaming, you know, apportioning blame to mm -hmm. anyone, you know, especially because this is not something you were born with. This is something that happens. Mm -hmm. At that times that you feel like, I, this, sh this should not have happened to me. Why did it happen to me? At that times you have those questions. Yes, but not until uh, I joined Church of Christ. I'm a, I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. Yes. That is the best church I think uh, I've ever come across. Mm -hmm. I don't even know why I, I didn't join it while I had my sight. Mm -hmm. on, but I, it's all about you, you, you don't, I don't have time for that, I mm -hmm. don't have time for that, you mm -hmm. know, that kind of thing. So my, 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 my response uh, is, uh, there is a verse in the Bible, I, I can't really quote it, but it could be, no, there's these uh, guys who asked Jesus, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, that kid who is born blind, makosa ni yake ama ya mamake? Ni mamake alifanya makosa ama, who is being punished here? Mm -hmm. yeah. Then Jesus answered, that kid has been, in, is, has been born in that state so that the Lord's name uh, may be glorified. Mm -hmm. When I heard that, and then there's a, a pastor who told me, mm -hmm. uh, things happen in life not because uh, they are supposed to be pure punishment, mm -hmm. but they're supposed to make you mm -hmm. realize your path, life path. You see, there's something called life path. Mm -hmm. I didn't read it anywhere. It's just in my mind. Everybody has a life path. Like, okay, we assume that our lives are predetermined, like uh, some supernatural powers predetermined our lives such that whatever is going to happen tomorrow uh, is already there. But I think it is as a, whatever is in, the, our future is a product of our today actions. Mm -hmm. So I, there's a life you expect, Grace, at there's mm -hmm. a life you expect tomorrow and the next week and the next month and next year and no, no. Mm. So if something happens that you never expected, and then you will feel like it is, it is a diversion from your life path. Mm. Then that is where uh, negative feedback comes in. Mm -hmm. You want to correct it to come back to your life path. Mm -hmm. Like uh, you become sick. Mm -hmm. You go to the hospital, come back to normal. Mm -hmm. So what if you lose your sight? How do you come back to normal? Maybe it is permanent. Yeah. Then, then you feel, now that is like, this negative feedback does not work here. Yeah. Now it is going to be positive. Mm -hmm. The moment you don't apply positive feedback, like now you embrace what the situation, the way it is, mm -hmm. And you insist on negative, like you want to go back to normal. Like, Saizi Nikianza Kueka in Ajiangu, I want to see again. My dear, there's nothing I will do with my life. Mm. I will become useless and probably kill myself. Wow. As we come to an end of this conversation, mm. uh, what, are your, what are your plans for the future? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I, I really want to reach out to people with this outside. Mm. I don't know how, I don't know where, but if only I could get a platform. I, I feel we need to share a lot. And these things, there are things that need to be incorporated in our curriculum, in mm -hmm. school. I, okay, I, that is beyond me, but how I wish, because I've realized a lot of, I told you I have the teaching experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, uh, I can relate what is in school and what is taught in school and what is outside here. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, before going into that, people with outside are mm -hmm. really suffering. If mm -hmm. Just in case this happened before you gained experiences like I can do this, I can do this. They, they, they might have mm -hmm. no, no idea about how they can generate income. Yeah. Only if they interact with those who know how to, probably mm -hmm. like me, 
I think I have a number of things in my mind. Mm -hmm. I have not exhausted them. But an interaction, probably organized, I even asked myself, these people nominated whatever MPs with for disability, what do they do? Do they, do they, don't, they don't have constituencies? Mm -hmm. uh, so do they get some money to, to help people like with a disability? Wh while their counterparts are giving bursaries to people going to school, mm. what do they do? Like, uh, how do they, do they even organize even medication? Mm. You see, there are people who need drugs to survive. Mm -hmm. that, is, that, is, that is a very serious thing. And apart from the 2000 that, that government gives people with a disability, only the ones they consider with severe disability, out of which I consider total blindness a severe disability. Mm -hmm. It is even in the registration form. Mm. But uh, guys are not in that, that nini, database. Mm. Yes. So, in short, um, there's a lot, there's a lot, and uh, we really need to find a way okay. of sharing and reaching out to people. There are somebody somewhere without sight who is suffering. Mm. This person needs assistance. The parents are overburdened. Mm. Maybe in Mtoto. Maybe an Enda Shulema or Memficha Endi Shule. Maybe in Mtumkubwa. I have a friend who is blind, has been blind for 10 years. Ali Kuja I met him in the church. Aka Kuja And he was like, uh, Umekuwa blind for only two years and you are doing this? How are you doing it? Oh, Adi Unaeka Kat Kwa Mtu? How? It's in the video. I've been doing that. I told him, Aka Nyambia, Umeni Challenge Sana. So now look at that. Who is supposed to challenge who? Mm. Somebody's been blind for over 10 years. Mimi na mchallenge na mimi niko kwa in condition for only two years. Wow. wow. So that can be rectified if we get a forum and sit. Okay. So probably these politicians need to do something and just mobilize. Attack per county, get blind people. Because if you bring blind people and deaf people, we won't share much. Just get, okay. get them at different platforms. Okay. They will share and you hear from them and see how to help them. All right. Yes. So finally... I want you to wind up by encouraging someone this morning. Mm -hmm. Just, just um, speak to someone, whether they are abled differently, they are well, someone that might be watching you this morning and they just need a word of encouragement from you as we finish up. And then afterwards, you can tell us where we find you on uh, social media and where your barber shop is. It's okay. Uh, thank you for that. That's a very good, uh, a good, a good dimension. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, um, Everybody uh, has a life. As long as you're not dead, you have a life. And you are on stage. Think about what you're doing. Does it, is it adding value? If it's not adding value, then think about something that can add value. Okay, in a nutshell, uh, blind people or anybody with a disability can also do something. It's upon those who are around this person to find out Try to reach out to people around you if you are disabled in any way because you are elbowed in a different way. First of all, find out what you can do. There is something. Don't sit and wait for help. There is something. Just find out what is it. Try to perfect on it. Share with whoever is around. Find out if you can do it. Then invest in it. It is possible. And those who, guys without disability, any form, you are not lucky. You are not lucky. You still have, you are on stage, and as long as you're still alive, you are not lucky to be in that position. It's a blessing. Don't underrate it. And uh, it is not sure bet that you live your life with both your legs, both your hands, uh, your, 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 your hearing abilities, your, your whatever, talking and maybe seeing. And as for as long as you are alive, anything may happen. Just prepare and uh, don't kill yourself. Always prepare to get back on your feet, no matter what happens. Because if I did it, you can do it. Okay. Where can we find you? Mm, I'll do it in three dimensions. Call, visit, or support. Call me at 0720-733-218. Isaiah Uching Owino. Visit me at... Uh, uh, KPLC substation in Babadogo. KPLC substation in Babadogo. We're just, I'm just around that, that junction. Just around that junction. So if you, you, you can do the phone calls and easily locate me. And uh, uh, I also have my 
uh, there is a for communications maybe some probably motivational talks to groups of students maybe other, other just whatever group or uh, you can uh, email me at uh, ochieng iso at gmail.com ochieng iso is i double z o h then at gmail.com and uh, you can also access my videos at youtube and tiktok They just search I saw the blind baba. I saw the blind baba. All right. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much, Aizo. We are very glad that you've shared your, uh, your experience with us, that you've shared your story, your challenges, and I am sure there's someone out there who has been inspired this morning. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much for your time. I think that's where we wrap it up. Oh, my God. Do not take anything you have for granted. Don't think you're too entitled. Don't feel you're too deserving of whatever you have. Take it as an opportunity that God has given you to make something better for yourself. And for those of us that are abled differently, disability is not inability. Take advantage of the situation you're in and make the most out of it. That is all we had for you from Empowerment Cafe. My name is Grace Maingi. Please do not touch that. Del Val is coming back with more.